Welcome to the Providence College Podcast. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. If you like what you hear, please review and share with others. Email podcast at providence.edu with questions or comments. Go Friars! Hello and welcome to the Providence College Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Chittam, and I'm joined, as always, by PC producer and videographer, Chris Judge, class of 05. Here at the Providence College Podcast, it's our job to bring you interesting stories from inside the Friar family. And today we are joined by two students. We have Gabby Short, a senior here at PC, and Aura Rexach, a sophomore. Aura, I apologize right from the start. I know I mispronounced <laughs> your name, but I was never going to get there. So you can you can correct me in a second. Um, Gabby and Aura are both from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank, Thank you for, for having, having us. That <laughs> no, was my pleasure. And Aura, can you please, you know, Pronounce your name the correct way. I apologize again. Um, my name is Aura Rixach, but Aura is good. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I, I, like I said, I apologize for not getting it right. Don't worry. Um, so I'd love to talk to you two about Hurricane Maria, all the effects it had on Puerto Rico, on you know, the, you know, the island itself, also your family and friends and the impact it's had. But before we get into that, I guess, first of all, why did you decide to come to Providence College? Gabby, if you want to start. Sure. Um, Well, I knew I wanted to come to the States um, to go to college. I just had no idea where, um, because being from Puerto Rico, I just really had no idea. Um, And my college counselor suggested Providence College. I was like, sure, I'll just try. Um, I applied. I got in and they gave me an amazing um, scholarship and financial aid package. And I had to take it. Um, So I'm here and it's been pretty amazing. I never visited. So stepping in through Harkins and seeing the very green lawn in Slavin was pretty cool. So you didn't visit all during the application process. So when was your first time on campus? For orientation. For orientation. Yeah. So that was in August or was it the Um, one in late June? Yeah, late June, I believe. Okay. So had you been to the States Beforehand? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd come a couple times for like camp and that kind of stuff. Got it. And Aura? Yeah, well, my PC story is pretty much the same as Gabby. <laughs> um, the only difference is that I actually wanted to stay in Puerto Rico. I didn't want to come to the States, but my parents were like, uh, hey, you'll get more opportunities over there. So why don't you just give it a shot? And I applied, got in, great financial aid scholarship package. And I also didn't set foot on Providence College until. June orientation, and then I fell in love with PC. So, so, but you were hesitant to come at first. Sounds like a little bit yeah. more than Gabby, if I'm reading it correctly. <laughs> yeah. So you said, "Well, now I love PC," but obviously, you don't go from one extreme to the other right. necessarily. So, what was it like? You know, not just during orientation, but your first few months here on campus. Well, really, I think the first few months were just like I felt really different, as I felt at home. Like I felt really free, so I really enjoyed it a lot. Like I didn't, ex- I, I didn't expect all those good things at once. And it was just like a very good feeling just being here. Got it. Got it. Well, first of all, thank you for, you know, give me a little backstory, a little context to the beginning of your PC experience. And like I said, in the intro, I'd love to talk to you about Hurricane Maria. So for both of you, what was your experience like? in terms of just history of hurricanes and the island. I I mentioned this to you before we got started, being a native Rhode Islander, there's been several that have kind of come through during my time, Um, you know, hiding out of the basement. I think it was Hurricane Andrew back when I was just a little guy. And then you go from there. Did you have any of those experiences, Gabby? I I think uh, at some point when we were both pretty little, there was one, I don't know if you remember the name. Hurricane George. George, yeah. Yeah. Um, But I just remember being in bed with both my parents and just hearing the like thunder and the rain, but it yeah. wasn't really that big, or at least it didn't have that big of an impact in me because, well, I was little. Yeah, I was actually not born yet. It was a oh. month before I was born. <laughs> yeah, but my parents said it was pretty like hard. It hit pretty hard the island, but nothing compared nothing to like, yeah. Maria. Yeah. Got it. So since then, there's really been yeah. not a whole lot. No. The thing is, usually. <laughs> Hurricanes kind of they aim at Puerto Rico, but, but they the second before it hits, it just goes up. Yep, it goes north. Never, and it ever, never ever hits straight. Yeah, really. Yeah. Okay, so so for Hurricane Maria, then at what point 
did you start noticing, all right, this is coming towards Puerto Rico? Like what for you internally, what was the line of demarcation between this is something that, hey, it's just another hurricane that's going to miss to, okay, this is potentially going to be a problem. So before Maria actually came Irma, yeah, and people were kind of scared for that one. I remember my parents yeah. on the phone, oh, we have to get boards and cover everything and move everything up because of the flooding. I was like, what are you talking about? N- nothing, yeah, nothing's, nothing's going to happen. Like, yeah. Nothing ever happens. And that's kind of what happened with Irma. It got close. Yes, there was flooding. Um, but it was very trees. minimal. Yeah. yeah. And then like we heard about Maria. Like Nobody was after, worried. A couple days yeah, after. Yeah, a couple days after Irma left, like we started hearing about Maria, but nobody was really that worried yeah. until like the night before. Yeah. yeah. The night before, That really. it was literally like approaching, like Directly. crossing the island, like yeah. straight in half. Because you'd had so many near misses. Yeah. Because yeah. we always have a miss. And everyone, <laughs> it's ridiculous. No one ever worries. Yeah. Which... Which is good, I guess, because it, it reflects kind of how we are. We're, we're just happy, easygoing mm-hmm. island people. Um, and, and with Irma, everyone was like, oh, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. We were fine. And then Maria and everyone was like, yeah, we're fine. It's going to be the same as Irma. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, people stopped and they were like, wait. This is real. Yeah. Like, it's coming. Right. All right. So you said the night before, that's kind of when it became a reality of what mm-hmm. could potentially happen. So was so for you, were you communicating with your family or was it more they were talking to you like, hey, this is about to happen? A little bit of both. Well, yeah, like for me, I was actually really worried. So I would be on my computer just like tracking the hurricane and seeing like when it was actually going to hit in the next morning. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, like I had contact with my parents throughout the whole storm. It was like after the storm was done that I like lost communication. Yeah, same. Okay. So that's a great segue into that. So during the storm, what was that like? I know both of your families are relatively close by. So I'm assuming mm-hmm. it was pretty similar. I yeah. guess you never know, you know, from neighborhood to neighborhood, but what was that like in terms of your communications with them in terms of the duration that it affected them when they were actually in the hurricane versus like the eye of the hurricane, just that whole timeline. So the day before I was communication was perfect. Um, and as it got later and later and later, um, and the hurricane was approaching, my parents told me we might lose communication. Just be aware. We will try to keep texting at all times just to let you know that we're fine. Um, and I knew it was about supposed to hit super early in the morning. So I went to bed, obviously worried, woke up for class, hadn't heard from anyone. Um, I woke up to a couple pictures um, that they had sent because the only way that they could communicate at this point was via WhatsApp. Um, Just pictures were fine. A couple texts here and there at about 6 a.m. There was absolutely nothing. And of course, I started getting worried. And at about 1130, almost noon, I was in the middle of a class and I get a phone call from my dad. And I remember (laughs) just standing up and telling my professor, sorry, I have to go. And I just ran out. Um, and I answered, it was very choppy. Um, and I could just kind of hear the wind in the back. And my dad was like, we're fine. We were hosting pretty much the entire neighborhood. There were about 23 people in my house and like nine dogs. Cause my neighbors had to come to my house and they were on the hallway sitting in beach chairs. Um, I got a couple pictures of that. Um, and after that, I kind of couldn't talk to them for a while, but I just knew they were okay. So that gave me um, peace, I guess. So why were all the families in the neighborhood or the kind of close by going going to your house? Yeah, we have a couple friends that, um, very close family friends that are actually our neighbors. And I guess their house had major um, damage, like flooding and trees falling over the house, etc. cetera. So um, I guess my house stood up quite well thankfully and and my parents offered them to come and also my aunt lives in a pretty tall building close to the beach so she joined in and i'm really glad she did because she has absolutely no doors no windows no anything left in her apartment so the whole thing got blown out Mm -hmm. i guess how was, how was, what was your experience like that that morning yeah so that wednesday morning um i woke up really early after going to sleep really late, like usual. Um, um, and I remember just like texting my parents, like 
every hour, just like, hey, how are you doing? And they would get back to me. They would send me pictures, videos, and I could see like the winds were horrifying. Like I had never seen anything like that. And I can say that like my parent, my dad is 72 years old. So he's been through the two worst hurricanes that have been through Puerto Rico in like the past hundred years. And he's like, I've never seen anything like this. Like, this is bad. So maybe after like six o'clock in the afternoon, I lost communication and I didn't know anything about them. I knew they were fine, but I didn't know anything about my brother who lived in another neighborhood in in another town. And I had seen a lot of pictures of like flooding in that area and like major damages in houses. And I was just like overcome with like worry. So it was pretty bad. And how does it feel? Like, how did it feel for you two in terms of, and this could be a hard question to answer, and I apologize for that, but you know, you're here, obviously you're on campus, you're safe, right? So you're, you're in a good spot. And then you have family and friends who obviously are being, you know, mm-hmm. in this, going through this incredible thing. So what was it like the feeling like for you, not only trying to like grapple with, I hope they're safe, but just like the emotions for you behind it? Yeah, I, like literally I felt helpless. All I could do was see the pictures and wish that I was home with my parents, like just be with them, even though I would do nothing there with them. Just be with them. I just wanted to be there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I I pretty much had the same um, feeling. I I felt guilty at the same time because I had SRW coming and I had been super excited for it for weeks. Um, And I I, I felt guilty having fun and, and having a good time with my friends when my family, my friends, my my people were going through this horrific event, I guess. Not even event. Disaster. Disaster. Yeah. <laughs> right. And even though, like, you could necessarily do anything, mm-hmm. right? Even if you were there, it's not as if you could have prevented, mm-hmm. you know, anything from happening. But it's still, the guilt still must have been pretty strong. Yeah. Just, like, being here and being safe and having absolutely everything, like, water, food, electricity, and them having absolutely nothing. And it's been like weeks. Well, now it's a month. month. Yeah. And we're still in that same stage where there's like nothing we can do. Just like pray, hope, and like whatever else we've done. Yeah. (laughs) A couple little creative things to try to help. (laughs) And that that brings up a good point. So for for you, you must have kind of these two different ways of getting information. Right. So you have your family and friends that you're in communication with, and whether they're sending you pictures or you know, you're doing kind of a live video thing or you're just talking on the phone or texting. And then you also have the opposite side where you're you know, consuming media about what's happening. So for you, how did, um, I guess, how did it, it play out in terms of the information you were getting from those sources and how well they jived with each other? I can, I can personally say like my parents knew nothing that was going around them. I knew more than they did because of social media. Like, I would tell them things and they would be like, no way. I can't believe that's happening. Like bridges falling down and like Mm -hmm. no way to get from one place to another. They'd had no idea. Yeah. Same same in my case. I remember sitting in front of my computer, just scrolling down Facebook and just seeing videos and videos and videos. And I would just cry cry and then crying and crying. Um, And my parents had no idea. And they were, they were like, we're fine. Like it, like we're not fine, but we're, we're safe. Fine. Yeah. Like, don't worry. It's not, th- it's not as bad as it seems, but it, it is it as is. bad as it seems. Right. Cause all they're seeing is like the, their house, their house yeah. how it's, everything is fine yeah. for them. And when you mentioned that everything was fine, what does that mean exactly in terms of like health, safety, the neighborhood? What, what exactly are you're fine. saying? Okay. Like our fam, like maybe a lot of people in my neighborhood, for example, I live like more on the countryside of San Juan. So it's more of like a poor area, I guess. Um, so like my neighborhood, all the houses are like wooden houses. My house is like concrete. So you can tell the difference, like all these people with their houses, like blown away versus my house, which is like standing and all that's missing is like fences and like the backyard is destroyed, but nothing really that's like, you need to live, you know? So can you put a little more context to that? That's interesting. So like, so like on your road in your neighborhood, like how many houses say were there, were like standing before Maria versus now? Okay. So I can say maybe like, there's a lot of concrete houses too, but there's many that are wooden. All the wooden ones are gone. Um, 
there's probably like the concrete houses are standing maybe the old old ones have more damage than the new ones but yeah wow and how and how about you gabby what, what's the neighborhood look like you know, in your in your neck of the woods thankfully my, my neighborhood is okay um houses are still standing um it's kind of ha- hard to see that there are no trees left um my backyard was very very green right now it's brown um and and it's just hard to see like trees that you grew up with or or played around um just literally gone yeah like i live in the countryside like i said so like most of the people around me are farm people so like all their chickens and like all their vegetation like those are things they lived by like without these things like what are they gonna do right Um, right so we're about or like you said a month out so a lot of things not there's a lot of things that that can't change in that period of time but obviously it's something that's kind of cycled through the the, the mainstream media news cycle and other things come up and every day there's new stories so for you what has the communication been like in terms of things that has improved in the past month versus things that you know, there's been no headway, but are vitally important to, you know, your family and friends. Communication is still a little hard. I don't know for you. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Yeah. Um, like my parents call me from the same exact spot every yep. time I talk I to too. them. Like, Near the fence yeah. or like when they're not home. Yeah. The other day they were both in the car um, and they're like, yeah, we're waiting right outside um, the the gate in a little corner, you know, right by where XYZ is. I'm like, what are you guys doing? There? And they're like, Oh, this is the only spot when, <laughs> where we can actually call from. And I couldn't help it but laugh. But And they're like, this is not funny. I'm like, I know it's not funny, but what am I going to do? Cry? You know? Um, but I, I think just how we Puerto Ricans are, we're trying to find, I guess, the best in all situations. Trying to find a way to enjoy life in a moment that's not so enjoyable um but there have been more and more places that um electricity has started to reach yeah like certain hospitals are already like they have electricity Mm -hmm. they have power they have water Mm -hmm. i mean it's there's less water than there is electricity right now for everybody um but yeah I, I still feel like it's a big struggle just mm-hmm. communicating, and especially within the island. Yep. Like, I think we are lucky enough that we live out of the country, out of the island, and we can actually talk to our parents once in a while, like every five days maybe. Yeah. But, like, what, our family that's inside of the island, they, they barely communicate at all. Mm-hmm. And how does that affect things in terms of just the whole, you know, disaster relief situation, if they're having a hard time communicating you know, with other people on the island. I think that's the main problem right now. Um, That's why things aren't getting to where they need to be because you can't reach anybody. And and it's not only in terms of communication, but you can literally not reach anybody. Um, Because as Aura said, bridges are down. Trees are everywhere. Everywhere. And there's no way to move. And there's also like scarcity of like gasoline. Yeah. And, And that's a big problem. Yeah. And I, I I heard the other day that it's not the fact that there is no gas; it's well, that they the, can't take they it. They can't take the gas where because the trucks are it. so big and they can't cross the roads that are so small and are also like like you know blocked. like blocked with trees. So it's kind of a catch twenty two, right? You have like yeah. the gas, you want to get it to, to places, but you can't cross, you can't mm-hmm. get there. So you know, but also the trucks that need the gas right. to fix those places, mm-hmm. and yes, you know, it's all just kind of one big cycle. Mm-hmm. So, are when are you planning on going back? I have no idea. I'm not going back. Probably till summer. Oh, yeah. I really wanted to go back for Thanksgiving, but um, my family said that that's not happening. (laughs) Um, So hopefully I can go back for December because I feel like actually seeing everything will bring me a little more peace, even though I know that what I will see is not what we're used to seeing. I know. Right. It's, It's a different Puerto Rico. Yeah. And here on campus, we have roughly 30 students from Puerto Rico here on campus. What's that been like in terms of your own internal community within the college? You know, I guess 
um, you know, has that kind of bonded some of you together in ways that maybe you weren't already? And how's that, how's that affected your lives? I think we've all gotten a lot closer. Yeah. Um, this actually brought me to Aura. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we kind of knew who, who we were, were, but we probably had never had a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this brought us together. And I, I feel like the whole group grew tighter yeah. and we, we found that we needed each other to kind of make it through this mm -hmm. emotionally at least and we knew we had to do something about it mm -hmm. so literally without each other we couldn't have done anything that's great well thank you so much for sharing all of this is there anything you want to say before we get going um i mean i i <laughs> i just like to say i guess thank you to everyone at pc that has supported everything that we've done we came up with an event and, and pulled it off in three days mm -hmm. um and we couldn't have done it without um pc support yeah. um and help and they've been there for every single one of us which has been yeah pretty cool faculty <laughs> and administrators just student life clubs yeah. everybody has been there been the greatest help for well that's good to hear well, thank you so much for sharing this. I know this isn't necessarily the easiest topic <laughs> to talk about. Um, so thank you again. Thank you for everything you're doing for PC. And um, thank you for coming on. Thank you for thank having you. us. <laughs>